Netflix uh, shares are under some pressure uh, this morning. The streaming giant reporting stronger than expected profits, but uh, revenue missed expectations. It added 5.9 million subscribers in the second quarter amid its password sharing crackdown. Our next guest interviewed Netflix co-CEOs Greg Peters and Ted Sarandos uh, during the uh, company's earning call last, earnings call last night. Joining us now, Jessica Reef Ehrlich, B of A Security, senior U.S. media and entertainment analyst. And if you don't, you don't know where we're going unless you know where we've been. So a year ago when they lost a million subscribers, the stock was one, under 175, 174 right. and change. So at, at this point, it's 477. That's a big difference. It's, it's had a 65% move this year. It's, it's just been a great stock. You could explain any weakness on just buy, just, just sell on the, on think, the news, couldn't you? Well, I think part of it is, is that it's, yes, part of it's that. It's had a great run. And the revenue disappointment, which is what everybody will point to today, um, I think there's very logical you know, explanation, meaning the base, they grew 5.9 million subs, which is fantastic, right. but it's on a over 230 million base. So it's not enough to really change ARPU, or the revenue per sub per month, that quickly. And a lot of the growth was in outside the U.S. and Canada, where revenue is lower anyway. Revenue per sub is lower. So we're expecting revenue to grow, um, accelerate in Q3, and really grow in Q4 and 24. But I think the, the key for them is that all of the drivers of growth here, the obvious drivers, are super high margin. That's good. So the, the 5.9, they can't, I thought of that as a one-off, but they've got more crackdowns over the rest of the world. What can they do? They, the crackdown is just starting. I mean, really? Oh. Like if you think about it, the co college kids are home. They're yeah. going back to school. Uh, mobile hasn't been touched at all. And anecdotally, I know a lot of people who haven't, haven't been cut off. So they initially switched, and when they realized they, they were cut off, they went right back. You have a friend who hasn't been cut off? Yeah. I, a lot of people <laughs> haven't been cut off yet. So we okay. think there are waves coming. So that'll, uh, that'll continue. That would, they got enough in the can? Will the strike be settled? When, when do we see the lag effects uh, of the strike? Well, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't know exactly how much they didn't respond to that question of, of mm. how, how long their original content will take them. But don't we all know, including, I mean, I include myself in this, but I think we know a lot of people who have long lists of recommendations from friends of things they have not yet watched. And so this is going to obviously hurt broadcast and cable linear, which is... Sadly, I mean, that, this is where the writers and, and actors are getting paid more, not less. So it will hurt linear, and it it's obviously will help streaming. That's an interesting point. Like, just from the writers and actors' perspectives on this, you're this shooting is, yourself in the foot by doing this if you are building up the competition where you're not getting paid as much. It's, it's ironic. I mean, it's really it's, it's crazy, and especially the timing. You're going right into the upfront market, and there's all this uncertainty. It's amazing. Um, so we still a ways to go before we get back to the old highs. That, that was a pandemic uh, fever? Yeah, but, I mean, think of the drivers. So the drivers are, obviously, one is password sharing, which will roll through over the next year. They dropped, yeah, yesterday or the day before, they dropped the basic plan in the U.S. and U.K., and they did that in Canada a few weeks ago. They're basically forcing people into the advertising tier. Immediately, that's a higher ARPU, immediately. And then you have advertising overall, like, what do advertisers want? They want reach and scale, premium video, and, you know, who has more of that in streaming than, than Netflix? So they have, again, like, no leg legacy businesses, no linear business. They're, they're not in it. So they have no, they're not losing subs, and they're not losing advertising. So it's, it, you, the move from linear to streaming is, is obviously to the benefit of Netflix. So they have a growing sub base, a growing advertising tier, and they're really innovative. I mean, they're offering different kinds of products than we've ever seen in linear. So it's, they're operating from a position of strength. What have, what have, I want to get, maybe you can comment a little on Disney and, I have, you know, you want to I just have one, stri I have one strike related question because it's what we talked to uh, folks at Moffitt Nathanson about yesterday. Yeah. I'm just so curious, which is what, if you were to look at a calendar in terms of when the strike becomes a meaningful problem for a Netflix, or we could go out and extrapolate to Disney and the other companies too. But for Netflix specifically, since you think they're in a better position, what is the date where, where you start to get nervous? Does Labor Day get you nervous? Does Thanksgiving get you nervous? Does uh, Christmas get you nervous? What, right. What? An extended strike is not good for anybody, but we know that all of these companies, Netflix, of course, they, they probably started this, but right. all of the streaming companies are sourcing globally. 
So, you know, if, if, if there was a global strike, right. that would really be problematic. But I heard you talking earlier about Squid Games right. and, you know, all of, you know, um, all of the shows right. that we never would have thought we watched. But we've now been open to other genres and, and foreign language TV shows and watching in... in, in um, right. Uh, so, but is that, but is it, so that, does that make you say, okay, l l let it roll? Like, how long, how long can this last for the industry before there's, there's genuine hurt? I, I, I honestly don't have an answer. I, th I think this is not good for anybody. I mean, how right. would you like not to, not to have a paycheck? This is no, not no, good for No, no, it's terrible. I, I'm just wondering when you look at the battle between management, who's sitting there saying, maybe I'm, you know, cash flow is good right now. Maybe I can, maybe I can hold out. And, and, and obviously folks who need to pay their rent, and it's a terrible, terrible situation. I have great sympathy yeah. uh, with, with, with the writers and the actors, but, but I ask the question because at some point there's, there is this tipping point for management to actually say, okay, now, right, on one side it's, I can't pay the rent, I need to, I need to do the deal. On the other side, it's management saying, I can't make the numbers, I need to do the deal. So what I'm asking you is, when does it come where I have to make the numbers I, and I have to make the deal? I, I totally understand your question. I don't know. I don't know the answer. You have answer. no I idea. You have I really don't know how much they've done. Um, I think you know what we're hearing is that several movies will be delayed. You don't have the the right. talent to promote it. Um, so it will affect television. It will affect film. It will affect right. movie theaters. There's a ripple effect. All of the bazillion people right. who are working in the various industries. I, I don't. But it, it, I think different companies are impacted differently right and it's really hard to say that by Christmas if this is going on like that would be insane but if it's still going on by Christmas like everybody's impacted but you know some impacted right. more than others.